Hi guys, today we'd like to present to you our evaluation of the Ford Motors Company and specifically their value enhancement plan. My name is Dima. My name is Gabby. My name is Jack. My name is Andrew. My name is Sahil. First of all, we would like to present to you, to you a general overview of the company, including its market position, history, a synopsis of the four family. Following that, we would like to present a comparable cash analysis in order to identify potential problems. After that, we would like to discuss the value enhancement plan, also known as the VEP. Then we'd like to offer alternatives to the VEP plan and pay a dividend and shares buyback. Ultimately, we would like to conclude the presentation with our recommendation for Ford. Ford Motor Company primarily focuses on the production of trucks and cars. Aside from their core competency, they also manufacture automotive components and systems and are involved in financing and renting vehicles and equipment. At their inception, they lacked a diverse revenue stream, but by the 1990s, they began to refocus their business model on their automotive and financing businesses. Currently, their vehicle sales account for 24% of their total revenue of $162.6 billion. They also began a string of highly successful acquisitions in 1987, which has spanned over the last decade and a half and includes standard and luxury namesakes like Hertz, Jaguar, Volvo, and Land Rover. As Dima will discuss later, Ford has accumulated a cash balance of $23 billion, which exceeds their close competitors. In an attempt to redistribute some of this excess cash to shareholders, Ford management has announced a value enhancement plan that we will refer to as VEP throughout our presentation. Despite the cyclicality of the automobile industry, Ford has remained successful in a top competitor since their founding. They are currently a member of the big three automakers, including competitors Chrysler and General Motors. Consequently, they are the number one largest truck manufacturer in the world and the second largest car manufacturer in the world, trailing slightly behind their Michigan neighbor, General Motors. I will now pass it over to Jack to give you a brief history of Ford and its role in the equity market. In 1903, Henry Ford founded the Ford Motor Company, along with the help of 11 investors. Next, with the backing of his family, Henry acquired full ownership in 1919 and soon became the nation's third billionaire family. Another major historical milestone occurred in 1956 when Ford Motor Company issued shares to the American public for the very first time. In 1979, the first non-Ford family member was assigned to the roles of chairman of the board and chief executive officer. It switched back to the Ford family hands in January of 1999 when William Clay Ford Jr. was appointed to these positions. The Ford family is one of the most accomplished and generous families in American history. Through their philanthropic contributions during the Great Depression and eventually transforming into one of the most preeminent automobile manufacturing powerhouses of the past generation, the Ford family has become synonymous with the American dream and the pinnacle of corporate success. Depicted in this diagram is the lineage of the Ford family, starting with Henry Ford and his wife, Clara Bryant. Henry and Clara would go on to have a boy by the name of Edsel, who would later marry Eleanor Clay. It is at this point in time that the Ford family begins to grow very rapidly. Their offspring, Henry Ford II, Benson Ford and William Clay Ford would go on to produce the most modern line of succession for the Ford empire today, William Clay Ford Jr. and Charlie Ford. The Ford family has a unique role within the company. They still are instrumental in managing and making financial decisions for the firm and shareholders. Their prominence on the board of directors that Jack mentioned barely scratches the surface of their influence. Currently, they maintain a 40% position in the company. They have set thresholds and they have begun to reach levels that are dangerously close to reaching those, as they have declined their stake substantially over the last four decades. They currently have 70.9 million class B shares, but when that number retracts below 60.7 million, they will only retain a 30% super vote. If they eventually dip under 33.7 million class B shares, they will lose all privileged voting. As a result, this presents an unusual conflict of interest between the family and the investors, which will be discussed in further detail later by me and Sahil. 
On this slide, I would like to talk to you about uh, cash valuations of the companies. To start off, it is alarming that Ford has extremely high cash reserves in $23 billion as of 1999, which is the largest in the industry. This emphasizes the bad management from the board in terms of investment and potential for recapitalization in order to enhance Ford's stack stock valuation. To offer another perspective, Daimler Chrysler is the second in the industry with a reported average reserves of 13 billion in the same period as Ford. It is extremely alarming because uh, Ford could certainly miss out some crucial in, on, on some crucial investment opportunities where General Motors is looking to enhance its lead even further as they report a cash reserve reserves ranging from 12 to 23 billion. Uh, but the company is more levered, so they have a more strategic use of their liquidity. We have made further calculations in order to have a broader picture of the industry and Ford in terms of their liquidity, uh, where Ford is once again a leader with an average cash ratio of 0.66, which is quite high in comparison to General Motors, who reported a 0.31 cash ratio, and Chrysler with a 0.298. Furthermore, we have calculated cash coverage ratios for the three companies in the same period where once again, Ford has the highest value of 25.53 on average. General Motors with a meager 2.27 and Daimler Chrysler with an average of 18.72. In those respects, these ratios depict a significant amount of information as GMC is a market leader due to a more adequate use of funds. Namely Chrysler trailing as they were recently purchased by Mercedes-Benz in 1998 and are undergoing restructuring with the higher um, ratios in 1998. Ultimately, it is important to note that Ford continues having problems due to the Ford family position with respect to recapitalization. Right, at this point, analyzing the needs of the two major stakeholders in the decision-making process, common investors in the Ford family, uh, becomes very important. Management recognizes as well. Due to the familial nature of firm ownership, a Ford's distribution policy needed to be carefully crafted. The value enhancement plan, the VEP, uh, was management's attempt to use Ford's high cash reserves to boost a low share price and convince the market that Ford stock was undervalued while simultaneously balancing the interests of the Ford family and common shareholders. Under the VEP, shareholders would exchange one-to-one -one their current common stock or Class B shares with the new Ford common stock or Class B shares, respectively. Shareholders could then pick from the following options. Uh, first, they could receive $20 per share in cash or the same value in new Ford common shares uh, based on the stock price of those common shares in late July 2000. Uh, second, they could receive a combination of cash and common stock uh, with a combined value of $20. Or the third option is that they could receive a combination of cash and common stock uh, that would allow them to maintain the same stake in the company as before the VEP was implemented. Uh, the VEP also included the spinoff of Visteon, uh, Ford's part manufacturing company to shareholders. If a shareholder did not state how they wished to receive the $20 distribution, uh, then they could be treated as if they opted for the all cash option. Moreover, Ford executives expected that about 40% of shareholders uh, would decide to take the all cash option. The VEP struck a very interesting balance uh, between stakeholder concerns um, as it offered the Ford family the option to retain their voting rights. Um, and for investors, the selections it offered them uh, satisfied both those who had immediate cash needs and those with the desire to increase their long position, um, all while uh, they were being taxed at the capital gains rate, which is advantageous to them. Uh, next, uh, we're going to go ahead and walk through some additional details about um, and, and some of the public reactions to uh, the VEP program.